Welcome, family, to the Servant Real Podcast. I'm your host, Don Cello, the Servant King. And y'all know what we do, man. We interview the entrepreneurs, the influencers, the creators, man. Anybody pushing anything positive in the culture and society today. And today, like no other, I got a special guest. We're touching on a topic that I haven't yet touched on on this episode. And me and this brother been back and forth talking. We really didn't build a relationship, and it's finally time to get him on. I'm glad to hear uh, my brother, Mr. Darius Clayton, what's going yes, on? Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Appreciate you having me I on. You. I appreciate Def- you coming, Def- man. Um, the guru, the credit guru. Yes, sir. Um, I think credit is something that a lot of us, we know about it, but we don't know about it. Exactly. Right? We don't know the ins and outs, the details, the different things that, that affect our credit, where right. they can boost it, where they can lower it. So before we get into that, let's start from the beginning. Mm-hmm. What about credit interests you that made you say, this is a path I want to follow? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think one of the main things that hit home with me was really just the fact that we're not taught, um, you know, much about credit. And so as an adult, you know, we run into situations where sometimes we don't leverage it the right way. You know, we aren't educated on it. So, you know, once we get that credit card, they test you young, you know, when it comes into, you know, getting into college, they sending you those cards automatically. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so I think that's really what sparked it. And then I got into finances when it comes to getting into the banking world. And it really showed me, um, you know, just the lack of education, even with our business owners, right, right. you know, about credit. Right. So um, that really is what motivated me to just dive in and learn more about it. Um, and even personally, you know, with my credit, because, again, I wasn't taught. Mm-hmm. So I, I ended up going down a path with credit right. um, that, you know, wasn't the best. So, you know, luckily... I was able to get involved in, you know, this company, and it really showed me, you know, it taught me the different lessons. You spoke on at college, right? Mm -hmm. Well, going into college and just being, as soon as you turn 18, they flooding your mailbox, they flooding everything. Exactly. Let's talk about some of the things that lead us down the wrong path in credit, right? Because a lot of times in our community, especially, we always trying to, Rebuild, which is nothing wrong with that, but mm-hmm. I think that we can start from the top instead mm-hmm. of always starting from the bottom. So kind of talk about some of the things that have us starting from the bottom, even though we start at 18 with these credit cards, with these large amounts that they give us, mm-hmm. but yet at 25 and 30, we find ourselves trying to fix it. For sure. I think, um, you know, where it starts is, you know, in the, in the household. You know, sometimes, you know, when it comes to your credit is, you know, it's unfortunate, but sometimes already being used, right. you know, before, <laughs> yeah. before you even get a chance to get it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know, with, with that being started, you know, I think once that happens and we see it, it's almost like, oh, man, I'm already starting off lower than somebody else is when it comes to the credit. So now, you know, it's just almost it's a setback, you right. know, for us. And so, um, you know, I think whenever you get the credit card just thinking about, you know, some of the purchases. As soon as you get the credit card, sometimes, you know, some of the bad habits that you might have is you want to go out there and, and max it out, uh-huh. you know. And so um, and that, that's really not the right thing to do. You want to keep it below, you know, as you learn that 30 percent or even lower right. of the usage that right. you have on there. So right. I think, um, you know, for me, what I ended up having to do is before all of this, before coming into the company, I would look online. I would Google, you know, and just research and, and try to figure out, you know, what I need to be studying about credit. So, cause I knew, I knew ahead of time that, you know, it's something that you want to, you know, manage smartly right. um, with that. So let's, is, is credit. I think one of the things that we're taught, if we're taught anything about credit mm-hmm. in our homes is pay your bills on time. Right. 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 Is that all there is to building your credit? Is that all there is to keeping such a high score or is it more to it than that? Yes, yes. So it's definitely more to it. That is a major, you know, part of it when mm-hmm. it comes to that payment history because it is 35 percent mm-hmm. um, of what the credit is made up of. So um, not only that, but, you know, again, the usage, uh, which is going to be another major, which is 30 percent right. of the credit, um, you know, which means keeping those balances. Say you have a three hundred dollar credit card. Okay. You want to only use see 30 percent of that, which is thirty oh, dollars right. um, right. of it. And so, um, you know, just having those good habits. Um, Also, you know, the different types of credit Mm -hmm. um, is another, you know, part of that, which is, you know, you have a credit card, which is going to be your revolving line of credit. And then you have your installment, you know, credit. So um, being able to installments would be like your car payments and different things of that sort. So, um, you know, not only that, but then the history 
you know, of your credit. So a lot of times we get credit cards and, you know, I'm going to just tell an example of myself. So mm -hmm. I opened up a secure credit card as my first credit card um, with my bank. Okay. Um, it came to it. My bank, something happened where they made me mad. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you know, I'm just going to call. I'm going to cancel this card. Right. I wasn't taught that you should keep every card open mm. because now that history that I had built over that year right. is all gone once I closed it oh, completely. Okay. So okay. that I lost. Oh, so you mean even if I don't plan on using the card, I should still keep it, man, leave it open. Exactly. Uh, exactly, exactly, because it's crucial, man. And, and to put in that year, you know how long it takes for you to build your credit. Now all right. of that is gone. So whatever you do, no matter what line of credit it is, if the interest rate is higher than what you want it to be, never close it. Just you know, it just off. exactly. Yeah. You want to keep it open. And, and a lot of times, you know, when it comes to that, you have to also use the card every now and every then to keep it, then, um, right. you know, right. active on there. So, yeah. So let me ask you this. What is, is there any benefit, though? So is my credit going to see um, an increase if I keep the credit card open, even if I keep the line open, even though I'm not using it often? Maybe I use it once a month or something like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, does that does that still help as far as increasing the credit? For does sure, for sure, because what's happening is you're still building that history. Okay. And so as long as it's open, it shows that, okay, you've been able to keep this credit line, you've been managing it mm -hmm. the right way for right. this period of time. Right. So the longer the history, the better, right. you know, even if it's just those small purchases, right. which, um, you know, we definitely recommend so that you just make sure you pay it off um, before mm -hmm. you carry that balance. And so, yeah, right. it's definitely key. Speak to the discipline. Um, that it takes for the credit card, because I could also mm -hmm. speak for myself. It's almost like, especially at a young age, a credit card feel like you're not even spending the money. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you go and you want something. <laughs> and just go get it. I ain't got it in my <laughs> bank account, but I got this credit card. Right. 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 And you just swipe it and you swipe it and you swipe it. Mm -hmm. Speak to some of the things, man, that could help us discipline ourselves instead of just, because that's just the first swiping. thing we do. For woop, sure. Woop, woop. Absolutely, because it's really easy, um, like you said, to just swipe that card, right. you know. So I think the main thing, you know, especially when you're first starting off, is so key that you make your on-time payments and different things of that sort. So what that means is don't over-leverage it. Don't, don't spend more than what you have. Okay. So the best purchases, I say, when you first get that credit card, the first thing you want to think about is, okay, what kind of purchases do I make already that I already pay for? Okay. So that's going to be gas. Right. You know, you go out to eat, you know, maybe you should – Watch that, you know, but right, just those right. smaller purchases, I say, to start off. Yeah. And then, you know, the great thing about it is, you know, being in the banking industry, what I would educate people on is set up automatic payments, mm -hmm. you know, because um, then you don't have to worry about the discipline of, oh, man, I forgot to make this payment, right. you know, make it to where it's automatic. And really, another key thing, because this is what happened to me on that payment, is you have to understand that there's a payment date. For the actual credit card. Okay. And then there's a, a date where it actually reports to your credit report. Okay. And so what you want to do is make sure that you're making that payment before it reports to the credit bureau. Okay. So I would say make that payment like a week in advance. Right. You know, so that it has time to post. And okay. then by the time it hits your credit, it shows that that utilization, the uses right. that you had you was paid. Time. Exactly. And so um, I think it's key just setting up that automatic payment if you can, um, making sure that you don't, don't go out there and buy. Right. You know, that, that item you've been looking right. at, you know, for that long. Not when you first start. No, that's not what it's about. Right. Um, it's really about getting your, you know, showing that you can make those on-time payments so that eventually they'll give you the increase on your credit mm -hmm. card. Mm -hmm. Now you're positioning your credit score to go out there, get that home, right. go out there, right. get those major purchases right. that you really want to leverage your credit on. Right. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of times, um, like you spoke to, uh, paying the bills on time. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about, because I know, let's say the credit, uh, your payment on the on the third is forty nine ninety nine, mm -hmm. but you shouldn't just make a forty nine ninety nine dollar payment. Exactly. Tell me why um, we should and how much more should we be making towards a payment like that or in you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because what's going to happen is they're going to tell you you know depending on your balance you have this minimum payment right, mm -hmm. and so what that means is this is the minimum and it's pretty basic the minimum you have to pay in order to be okay with us right. and not show that it was a late payment, right? right? But what that does is that minimum is not always the complete balance right. of what you owe. So say you owe that 49, your minimum payment may be $10. Right. So now you're still carrying a balance, which is going to accrue interest. Okay. And so the only time you have interest is if you have a balance on your card. So what I would say is make the payment, especially when you're starting off, 
you know, some people say you want to want to leave a dollar on there, you want to do right, this type right, of things, right, right. but honestly, you can just pay it off completely. Just build that discipline, and you can worry about that later on down the line. So I would say play pay the complete forty nine ninety nine that you owe. And then again, after it posts on your credit report, you see that it reported. Now you can start utilizing it again okay. and just making sure the next time that comes around that the balance is back down um, from there. I know one time when we talked, uh, I think a lot of things that we rely on uh, might not be as trustworthy when we go to our banks or our financial institution, which is these credit apps mm -hmm. or the different credit um websites or whatever mm -hmm. talk about that because I, I think a lot of people i've heard that you know credit karma told me this right um but the bank told me this right uh, credit so-and-so told me this but the loan people told me this right mm -hmm. talk about that and where 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 how much trust can we put into these different credit websites and things that tell us that they're gonna give us our exact credit score and all <laughs> right. that Right. Yes. Yeah, um, so there's different types of credit scores is what it is. So um, say Credit Karma. Credit Karma is definitely known for showing you that your score is higher. Right. You know, I'll be honest. So, you know, it was a time, you know, I, before I got started, you go into the car dealership, I would just check my credit score. Right. You know, it was 600, right. Right. you know, something. Come to find out, it was much lower. Mm -hmm. You know, it was almost 100 points lower, wow. honestly. And so what do you think that did for me when I was in, right. in the car dealership? Right. You know, that feeling that you get. So it's like, okay, how can I, what can I do? Like, I was supposed to be able to, like you said, trust them mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to that. So um, what you want to think about is, say, when you get a home and when you're applying for a car, they pull different types of credit reports. And so for a home, for example, we use something like a FICO score. Okay. Um, and so that one is going to pull a little deeper. It's going to look at a lot more items um, on there when it comes to maybe you have student loans and different types of credit lines that you have compared to the car dealership. They just want sometimes just a basic score, okay. um, you know, on there, just the basic information to try to get you approved. Okay. And so what I would say is, um, you know, what we use, we use called, it's called smart credit, um, which gives you uh, all three. Okay. of your credit bureau. So you have Experian, mm -hmm. Equifax, and TransUnion. Okay. So what you want to do is look at those numbers and make sure that they all are in alignment. Okay. Because sometimes, you know, something's reporting here that's not reporting there. Right. So just make sure all of them are accurate okay. um, when it comes to that. And then pull your annual credit report. That's okay. the most accurate you can get. Okay. Um, I believe it's my uh, annualcreditreport.com mm -hmm. that you can go to on there and, and pull a full detailed analysis right. of your credit. So it is possible to have um, a different score for each one, but they shouldn't be tremendously different. Exactly, yeah. So if you're seeing something that's even 20 to 25 point difference, um, there could be something that's on there that maybe is reported um, inaccurately. Um, maybe, you know, your credit line is not reporting there. So it's something that you want to definitely research on it and, and look at because it makes a big difference. Um, just speaking when it comes to uh, mortgages so we use your middle score so say if all your scores are different say you have a 500 mm -hmm. and then one of them is showing a 580 the mm -hmm. next one is showing a 630 okay you want to see what's going on there because it right. shouldn't be that big of a difference in between um with that okay so let's talk about man what what it is you do what it is your company does how you guys um assist people mm -hmm. um with their credit the different things you guys do let's get into that absolutely so uh the main thing is it's really you know, what I would say our company does in, is, is give you a second chance um, because, again, we weren't taught about credit. So what do you do when you get in that bad situation where you notice like, oh, man, you know, now my credit score is 439, mm -hmm. you know, after I got my first credit card and didn't use it, right. you know, the right way. You know, where do you go? And, um, you know, before this company, I, I didn't know where to go. Um, I honestly got involved in the banking industry to try to learn more about it to see. And then I realized there that they're not really even teaching you, right. um, you know, what you really need to know. And so with our company, what we do is, you know, when it comes to any negative items that happen, because say if you start not making those payments on the credit card, you start getting late payments on right. there, which affect mm -hmm. your score. Um, you also get collections that say you never have a chance to pay them back. Um, your car is going to go into collections, and those items affect you negatively. This could be 50 to 100 points that you could be losing because of these items, right? Wow. Um, anything from bankruptcies, repossessions, those type of things happen when we don't know how to use credit the right, right way, right? Right, right? And so where do you turn? And so, you know, luckily we were introduced to this opportunity to um, be able to educate us. We're United Wealth Educators. 
um, to just educate. And we start young in the youth. So those items that you have on there, how it works is um, we do a full detailed analysis of your credit. So we pull your credit score. Um, once that happens, we look at any, you know, with all three credit bureaus, um, any negative items that are on there reporting. Okay. Um, from there, we have our credit attorneys that actually go in. They produce um, dispute letters that we send to all three of these credit bureaus. Okay. Um, of course, it takes about 30, 45 days before the credit bureaus will report back. Mm -hmm. And so once this happens, we get those results back. You send them to our corporate office. We review it for you. And then, again, so just to give you an example, um, so I had a client where she came in and she had two credit cards that were in collections, also um, a repossession. Okay. And so she got involved in the um, program. Mm -hmm. So she sent off her letters. You have to sign. Um, there's a whole process that we have, but we give you a roadmap that you can follow to, you know, make like the process step easier. Step. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, because um, a lot of times you get in companies and they tell you, yes, I'm going to dispute these items off of your credit report. I'm going to get all eight of these items removed. You know, nothing that's going on. Right, You're not right. a part of it. Right. You, you call them. You can't get a hold right. of them. So, yeah, so our process is completely different um, to where, again, you know, we're available for you and you'll see what's going on and be able to track your progress. Um, but those items were able to be removed um, within 45 to 90 days. So she came back after her 45 to 90 day period. Um, she had two of those cards deleted off of her report. Mm -hmm. And so what I mean by deleted is completely gone because sometimes you go through and they'll tell you they'll do like sweeps on your credit report. Mm -hmm. But those are mainly for, um, they show back up basically okay. on your report. So it's temporary. Um, with us, it's complete, it's deleted off of there. Okay. So, um, you know, but what that's able to do once you get those items removed is allow you to have a cleaner history right. um, on there. And so um, I think that's the, that's the main thing. It's really just about giving you that second chance to um, restart and really educate you because, you know, again, you go to a company and they, they tell you, yeah, we'll, we'll clean up your credit report for you. Right. But they're doing it, right? They're doing it, right. You know, so and you so. Learn anything. Exactly. Right. So what's the chances, you know, what's, what's probably going to happen? You're going to go back down. That, that same e exactly. And so that's why we educate you right. um, on it. And you have your own customer website, your own portal to really be able to learn more. Because, you know, with credit, it's not just about making those on time payments, like we right. said. Right? right. It's about budgeting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about making sure that you pay off your debts right. that you have. Right. And right. so that's what we provide you right. um, with our program is those, um, you know, different tools like that. And I was thinking as you were talking, tell us, is it is it better? to have something shown on your credit that you paid it off or is it better to just have it removed um all together right because i hear that dispute a lot oh it says it's paid off but it still shows up i mm -hmm. would assume and i believe the average person would assume it showing that i paid it off mm -hmm. would be a lot better opposed to me just getting it removed all together but mm -hmm. you see it different on how you yes yes for sure so um, a lot of times, see, what we were taught was that, you know, when a collection happens, you pay it and, you know, that's the best thing to do. That's right. what I was taught, right. at least. But I didn't realize that just because you pay it doesn't mean that they're going to remove it off your credit report. Mm. So what you have to do is make sure if that's something that you're going to pay, that you have a, it's a, item, a document called paid by deletion. Okay. And so which that means, because what happens is whenever something goes into collections, mm -hmm. the original person that you had that account with, mm -hmm. say you had... Um, you know, just team up, right? Yeah. So, say you started with them, right? And the item went into collections, so they sold that debt right. to somebody. somebody else, right? So, okay. really, technically, what we leverage is the Fair Credit um, Reporting Act to where you can dispute an item because that's really technically not your debt anymore. Uh, and so, gotcha. because they sold it, so mm -hmm. it's, it's not your debt. So, anything mm -hmm. is on there. So, say they when they sold your debt. Some documents went missing, mm. you know, right. from we that transfer. We don't know what's going on. You know, missing. so it, exactly, you know, and it's anything is inaccurate on there. Your name is misspelled. Right. Um, any of those things. So I think the main difference is between that is it's definitely worth getting it deleted off of there because it's going to do you no good if you make the payment and it's still on your credit report. Right. It's going to say gotcha. that you paid it, but it's not going to um, right. do anything for your credit. How, how it's, it seems like when we're dealing with credit, mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to have a decrease in points than it is to have an increase, right? Because exactly. you go through all these steps of paying this all in, all you go to six months, and you're like, man, I've been paying this, this, this. Mm -hmm. Then you look at your credit score, and it's still, you know, it might not be bad, but it's not what 
what you thought. Why and how does that work, right? And why does it work where so one late payment is almost can crush you, right? But you can have all these on time payments mm -hmm. and no benefits, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's hard. It's like they almost are looking for you to, you know, make that bad payment because what happens is they're able to capitalize off of your bad credit. You know, in this in this world that we live in, it's it's about money. You know, yeah, and so right. our our job is to make sure that we make it hard for them to take our money right. when it comes to that. So that's being educated, you know, about credit, making sure that you don't have that late payment, you right. know, because, again, it is going to drop your score right. and it's going right. to be very hard. It's a harder process to come back up right. than it is for it to drop. <laughs> right. And I, you know, witnessed it. So right. um, I think that's the main thing is just we have to change. Um, you know, we have to educate, you know, and make sure that our families understand so that we can prevent you know, somebody going through what right. so many um, Americans are. Right. Mm -hmm. So speak to this before you go. Give this tip. Mm -hmm. um, you have someone who's watching, uh, random number. She got 10 debts, right, 10 things on her on her credit report. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard before you, you start with the smallest, pay it all, work through, you know, snowball effect. What's what would, what would be a piece of advice you would give a viewer who is lost? They don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. um, all they do is try to apply for this, apply for that. They keep getting denied, but now they're ready to they ready to they ready to, to clean this thing up. What mm -hmm. would be the first step you would tell them to take? I would say the first step um would definitely be to, to talk to someone that's a credit specialist, right. um, honestly. And um, you know, make sure it's someone that's that's genuinely caring about what you're looking to do. Um because during that time, you, you don't need someone that's just going to, you know, make you promises and not keep them because you're in a, a vulnerable state now mm -hmm. to where now you finally decided to take that action and make a change on, you know, trying to level up your life. Yeah. And so um, I think, you know, with that, you know, you definitely want to um, – there's lots of different things you can do, but if, if you already are in a point to where it's went to, um, you know, a negative state where it's in collections, I would say definitely, definitely, um, you know, reach out because um, – you know, that's something that we can help with. And it's, it's good to, to come up with a game plan to slowly work down those debts yeah. if they're not in collections. Right, right, you know, right, and right. so, um, but say if there's just, you have some high balance credit cards that you have on your report right now and you're trying to come up with a game plan, um, you know, there's calculators out there that help you pay down debt. And so with us, we have something called a debt payoff calculator mm -hmm. where you place your debts inside of this calculator right. compared to the income that you make. Okay. And it'll break down, um, you know, how much you could be putting towards these cards to pay down the debt. And so um, just, re you know, finding out different tools like that yeah. to help you because it's, it's really, you know, um, it's hard, you know, when you yeah, when you really get there and you're trying to, you see all these debts and you're trying to figure out a plan yeah, for it. Cool. So, yeah. That's so, bro, but man, tell tell the people where they can find you, where they can get your services from, your number, wherever they can find you if mm -hmm. they need your services. Absolutely. So, um, be on Instagram at Clayton the Guru. Um, you know, again, we're United Wealth Educators there. Uh, you can reach me on Facebook. It's Darius Clayton on there. That's D E R R I O U S. Last name Clayton, C L A Y T O N. Um, again, you'll see me on there. Um, you know, I'm always willing to talk. Just reach out to me. You can reach me. We actually are doing a live event um, uh, December the 11th here in Jacksonville, Florida, off Airport Road. Um, if you need any details about that, again, this is going to be an event for anybody that's tired of living with bad credit, um, looking to maybe purchase a home. You know, in 2022, it's, it's coming up. You know, this year is almost Absolutely. over for us. So um, definitely just, you know, come out, reach out to me. You can reach me at 904-624-6402. Um, I'll be happy to speak to you. It's all about, again, it's this 2022 together. Um, I appreciate you having me on because, oh, I mean, man. it's been a pleasure, man. Hopefully I can come back on here and, yeah, and speak again. Yeah, man, sir. I appreciate you, man. And we hope that uh, anybody watching, man, hopefully you were inspired. Maybe, uh, like I said, somebody is in between. They don't know what to do. I know especially coming into these new years, we have these visions mm -hmm. or these new resolutions that we want to do, and I'm I'm positive credit is on somebody's mind. Right? Absolutely. We're all Absolutely. ready to purchase a home and, and get out of these apartments, renting and all these things. Mm -hmm. And credit is one of the Absolutely. It's not one of that. the most important things we have to have, so I appreciate you coming. Bro. Yes, sir. You know Thank you. I appreciate what you do, man. This platform that you have, man, is, is definitely, definitely A1, definitely, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, bro. Yes, sir. And again, man, we hope y'all learned something. Hope, you took, hope we inspired somebody. Again, get with Mr. Clayton, man, so we can uh, uh, show you, give you some guidelines, give you a roadmap 
on uh, starting your journey to fix your credit. And like always, we'll be back on the server real next week. Let's get it.